I command you, loose your grip. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out of her life. Come out right now. Loose your grip. Loose your grip. Loose your grip. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Fire. 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 Fire in Jesus' name. Fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free in Jesus' name. No more torment. No more torment. No more torment. No more limitation in Jesus' name. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Come out every single one of you. Come out every single one of you. Not one left behind in Jesus' name. Fire. 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 Fire in Jesus' name. Fire. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. I disconnect her from every evil curse. I disconnect her from every demonic influence right now. I disconnect her from every witchcraft in Jesus' name. Leave her body. Come out and never enter her again in Jesus' name. Come out and never enter her again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fire. 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 Fire in Jesus' name. Every single one. Come out. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. No more darkness in Jesus' name in her life. No more darkness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No more torment in Jesus' name. No more torment at night in Jesus' name. Leave her life. Come out and never enter again. What's happening in your body? What's what are you experiencing? Oh, I'm sweating so much. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Like I was having a panic attack and then... What's happening? How do you feel now? How do you feel now? Oh, my stomach is burning. Oh, it's burning. I didn't want to leave. It was fine. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. We're looking forward to hear... We're looking forward to hear your testimony. I see a man that God's going to bring into your life. A godly man. You will be married and you will have successful relationship amen i believe that god the fact that god called you out out of 90 people that's here somewhere out in south africa and then called your problem and he set you free today that this this uh freedom is permanent in jesus name amen be blessed amen. kareen thank you amen, amen. hi kareen how are you doing i'm good how are you i'm doing how well i'm doing well uh, begin telling us uh, your testimony. How did you come about Hungry Generation and how did you get into Zoom and receive the prophetic word last Wednesday? Yes, I was supposed to join a church meeting um, by, on YouTube and it got cancelled and it must have gone onto Facebook. So there was a, a, a Zoom link on Facebook for me to click and when I clicked on that I got invited to a Zoom meeting. When I entered the Zoom meeting, I realized, oh my word, I'm in a sermon <laughs> overseas. You weren't even expecting this. And the next thing you ended up being in the Zoom church. Have you heard of Hunger Generation before that? And I've watched your sermons, uh, but no, not the church itself. Wow, that's amazing. The, the prophetic word that was given, it said that there was a generational curse specifically over the area of your relationships and that God wanted me to pray for you. Can you begin to tell us from the beginning how it started where it started what was that curse producing in life what were you experiencing it started likely with my my mom leaving when i was four and then my dad soon afterwards leaving as well and i, I found out at a later stage that I, my mind had actually blocked that i was molested um and i suppose i, I was always looking for love <laughs> when i was younger i used to write letters to god if God didn't exist, then, then life would really suck. And I refuse to believe that love doesn't exist. When I was 18, I got a tattoo, Love Never Fails, which is actually at the end of the day what saved me. I started dating somebody two years ago. Um, the relationship went well until lockdown started last year. And I was living with his parents. Yeah, then the drugs began, the witchcraft began. He stayed for five days straight. And when he woke up, he was a completely different person. And I was completely stuck there. Started uh, abusing me. Um, he used to take sticks and do like different symbols. I realized that they were witchcraft symbols. And then when I tried to speak to him about it, he said, it's all in my head. Yeah, I got super abusive. I spoke to my family. I spoke to my friend. I thought that we were just having petty arguments during lockdown. And as things were progressing and getting absolutely worse, I started writing letters to God again. I started 
this entire imaginary relationship in that, at that time with God. I, I used to talk to him about my feelings. Every night, two minutes past two, I vowed to spend time with him. This actually looking back helped me so much because I'd wake up in the morning. Uh, as my ex woke up, he would break me down, beat me up, uh, whatever. And I was filled with so much love from the night before that I could withstand it. And that, that really, I realize this right now, like that, that saved me. If I didn't feel all of that love, I wouldn't have been able to endure it. Were you even saved at that moment? Or these were the steps that God was leading you to salvation? And I wasn't a fully devoted Christian. I didn't know the realities of the spiritual realm. Where things really went south, really went bad with, with, with your boyfriend, and you felt like God revealed that there was a curse cast on you. When did you feel like this that was the moment that would that happen him, i was on my knees trying to deliver him because i got into contact with him again and as i was on my knees his voice completely changed and he said two things he said you would be a prostitute for the rest of your life and the second thing that he said is no man will ever love you but me and i knew at that moment it's done like uh, i know now so this so is where well. this is where you felt like he cursed yeah. you with with those words particularly that yeah. what did you start experiencing after that after he spoke those words over you First of all, every man that wanted to pay for something. I, and the thing is, funny enough, I was struggling financially and I wouldn't accept help from people because I thought that they were trying to buy me. Well, there were opportunities of prostitution coming into my life. Second thing, any person that tried to love me or, or just anyone that tried to like, be in within a meter close to me, nobody could touch me. My body would freeze up. I remember for the first six months, I felt like nobody understood what I was saying. I remember like falling next to my bed and crying to God and, and I was telling him that nobody understands me. I'm speaking complete French. I grew closer to God and I realized that Jesus had that same experiences where nobody understood him. So much sleep paralysis. I, I woke up in the middle of the night and there was spirits on top of me, like holding me down. If there is even a person trying to get close to me, a person trying to love me, thought that this was my cross to bear. I have only had to give my life to God and I could never be in a relationship ever again. It's just how my life is going to go. Also also, also, there was one thing uh, pointed out that, that you were experiencing sexual dreams and men coming to you in a dream, correct? Yeah. Lots of dreams, but also thoughts at night when I'm trying to okay. sleep and I can't sleep because I'm thinking of being raped or, or sexual coercion the whole time. And this was continuing for how long? Almost a year. A almost, year. almost a year. Okay, so fast forward to last Wednesday. As you came in the room, you weren't quite sure where you're at, what, what you're doing. As, as you were called out and, and you were receiving a prophetic word and then the prayer began to happen. What did you begin to experience physically? I, I got major, major panic attacks, but I, I've had that before and I, I, I knew what that was. Like complete sweat. When you said Holy Spirit fire, my stomach started to burn and I could feel like my entire body burn from, from bottom to top. Definitely the power of God, the fire of God cleansing yeah. you. Now that it's been a week exactly to date, tell us what do you see different from what it was before till now when we were doing prayer before you know i received deliverance i actually was on my knees and i prayed to god because like man had walked into my life but i still felt like i couldn't be in a relationship so i prayed to god and i was like please can i just have clarity i know that you know i should trust you and wait on you because this is a man of god and I don't want to hurt his feelings. I can sleep soundly at night and I don't have to blame myself because of my dreams or my thoughts. They're also gone, but I know now that it, that it wasn't my fault. I've let um, him hug me now, which is which is a big step for me. Um, and I, I know that I'm free and that's just amazing. I thought it would be for the rest of my life. You used to experience those sleep paralysis, the, the night torment, those thoughts at night, practically every single night before that, right? Yeah, if someone was interested in me, and then it would magnify. That curse was really working against you. Yeah. Uh, and now that's been for a whole week, you've been sleep, sleeping peacefully, no more sleep paralysis, no more yeah. thoughts tormenting yeah. you, no more sexual dreams. Uh, you, you just, I mean, you, you even look different on that on, on series. So, wow, that's, oh, yeah. that's so amazing. And so, and then the last part of the prophecy was that, that God is bringing a godly man into your life. So yeah. you're saying that there's somebody in, in, in your life that, that is, is a godly man that is interested in you, correct? Yes, yeah, that's correct. What would you advise our viewers that are watching right now? There's people in the Zoom waiting to receive prayer. There's people that are watching us on YouTube and Facebook. What would you advise them? First of all, you know, 
your actions or the actions of, of, of people around you it can really affect you. There's a reason why God says not to do certain things. And he knows in the long run what it can do spiritually. Don't ever think that it's you or, or that you're to blame. If I wasn't filled with love while I was trapped in that situation, I wouldn't have been able to come out alive. I think I would have killed myself. I knew that God helped me. God's love is the answer to everything. Corinne, thank you so much for your testimony. We thank God for what He's what He started in your life and what He's going to continue to do in your life. Amen. Amen.